I built this house using less than a dollar's worth of material and without using a hot wire table. You can do the same. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. If I had a dollar for every time, I read a comment along the lines of, I can't build this cool stuff because I don't have a hot wire table and I don't want to buy one or I can't afford one. Well, I'd have a lot of dollars and I probably wouldn't need Patreon. It's a comment I see far too often and it's one that I would like to see stop. You've seen a lot of these buildings in the backgrounds of my videos for the past couple of years. And the truth is a lot of them I made before I even owned a Proxon. I just used a knife and some foam core. While a hot wire table absolutely makes a lot of things faster and easier and there are a few things it can do that you can't do with a knife, you can still build a ton of cool stuff without it. You can build stuff like this. It just takes a little bit of creativity and patience. Today, I wanna to show you how I made this really nice looking little Tudor farmhouse using simple tools, dollar store foam core, and probably under $1 worth of materials. It's hard to even quantify how much it actually cost because it just used a little bit of stuff that was really cheap. So you guys ready? Let's do this. The majority of this build is made from Dollar Store Foam Core. This is specifically the Ready Board brand from Dollar Tree, which has that easy to peel paper. As usual, when doing a building, I didn't have much of a plan or a template to follow. I just started cutting walls. While I don't follow any hard scale rules when it comes to buildings, a good starting point to keep in mind is that a wall height that looks pretty appropriate for 28 millimeter scale minis is somewhere between two and a half to three inches per floor depending on the type of building. I peeled the paper off the foam core for two reasons. One, the glue bond is weak on this paper by design and I didn't want to build on an unstable material. And two, I wanted to create the stucco or waddle and daub texture right onto the foam core itself. The issue with this is that it makes the foam core pretty weak and bendable. So I decided to make backing pieces using regular old cardboard. Cardboard is far from my first choice as a crafting material and it is better to say use thick XPS foam, but the whole point here is to show that you don't have to. You can absolutely use something like cardboard for this, and cardboard is something that everybody should have access to. Once the foam core was hot glued to the cardboard backing, I moved on to creating the stucco texture using a ball of aluminum foil. This is an excellent method for creating the texture that is fast, easy, and free. No grout, no material to buy. It does come with one problem that will have to be addressed later, however. After texturing, it was just a simple matter of hot gluing all the walls together. This created a bit of a flimsy structure, so I cut a piece of cardboard to perfectly fit inside that would act as a brace and make the whole thing way stronger. There are two ways to make simple buildings look a lot more impressive and interesting. One is by adding lots of little details later on in the build, but the other is to create slightly unusual shapes and forms in the structure. This is how you avoid that kind of birdhouse or shoebox building look. For this one, I thought it might be neat if the building had a bump out to add a little breakup in the form. I imagined that this was a wood addition to the main structure, so before assembling it, I created some wood grain on the foam using a wire brush and some plank lines using a sharp pencil. Again, I added some cardboard bracing to the interior of the piece just to add some strength. Before adding all the exposed timber to the structure, I needed to get my door in place. And for this particular build exercise, I decided not to use one of the pre-made resin doors that I had made previously and instead just used foam core. I did cheat a little bit in terms of tools here as I used a special jig to get the shape, but in reality, this just saved me some time during filming and you absolutely don't need it. In the past, I've done the same thing using lids from paint or glue to create the circle part of rounded doors. 
Using the simple wire brush wood grain and pencil line technique, I made this foam door look like wood. For the hinges and door handle, I used construction paper. This is a great material that can be had for free or cheap. To make the hinges, I just cut narrow strips and then using a punch or a small nail, poke little dents into the paper. If you have a soft surface like a cutting mat underneath, this will create little bumps on the other side that will do a pretty decent job of representing metal rivets. For the door handle, I just cut two small layers of paper. I had to switch to green paper for this because seeing what I was doing with black paper on a black mat was pretty much impossible. It only takes a little bit of PVA or tacky glue to add these paper pieces to the foam door. In the past, I've also used a glue stick, just the kind you'd give a kid for school to great effect. This is where I run into the first problem using the foam core with no hot wire. I really didn't want the door to be this thick and protrude that much, so I had to carefully cut it thinner using my Ulfa knife. It worked out, but it was pretty tricky to do. I then needed to create a wood frame around the door, which is always tricky to do with foam. I again used my jig to get the outline, but you could of course make this jig yourself using something like cardstock, or make your life way easier and just use rectangle doors. I wanted this building to have a brick foundation in the same style that I did my previous house. Without the hot wire, I had to go about it slightly differently. The thickness of the foam core is actually a really good size for cutting individual bricks. I cut strips, then individual bricks. No measuring here, just eyeball. Using my simple weathering technique, I tumbled the bricks to soften the edges and add some texture. One day I will switch out these rocks for bits of metal so it's less messy. The rocks I use are not the best and tend to break up and get dusty. They just were the first rocks I found in my yard when I set up this system. Using tacky glue, the bricks are easily applied to the surface of the building. Some people are always really curious how long it actually takes me to do the things that I do. And usually my response is, it doesn't matter because everybody crafts at different speeds. How fast I build something is irrelevant because it could take you half the time, it could take you 10 times the time, it doesn't matter. In this case, I think it's interesting because I am challenging myself to do this build without any of the real specialty tools like a hot wire cutter. You know, I'm using foam core, cardboard, little X-Acto knife, glue gun, nothing special here. That limitation can slow you down. But I've made it to this point, which is the main structure, textured, some bricks, a door, or a little add-on, and I am into my build time for an hour and 15 minutes? That's really not that bad. And I'm also filming, so that adds some time. So call it an hour to get to this point. Now again, might take you a whole day and that's fine. Using simple tools doesn't make things impossible or impossibly slow. However, I now have to do all the timbers on this Tudor house here. That's where things get a little bit tricky using foam core and no hot wire. Foam core is fairly thick. It's about 3 16 of an inch thick. And if I cut it into wood strips and apply it, these will look like they're standing really, really proud. And as I said, when I did my really nice Tudor house build, I like the stucco to look fairly flush. I don't want these beams sticking out too much. It doesn't make sense. I'm not going to try to shave these all down with a blade. So I have two options. Either I just make them thick or I try my really crazy idea. You think it's gonna work? Necessity is the mother of invention, right? While the rolling pin didn't get the foam quite as thin as I would have liked, it did get it about 30% thinner and I'll take that. Oh, and before anybody complains that they don't have a rolling pin and it's a special tool, come on. I literally bought this one at Dollarama for like $3 Canadian that I use for crafting.
From this foam, I cut strips to use as timbers. I, of course, used the wire brush to give the planks some wood grain. Then it was just a matter of going around the building and adding the strips. I had to make sure they were wide enough to cover the exposed cardboard on the corners. I could have avoided this if I had planned a bit more and cut the cardboard short on the corners and joined the corners foam to foam instead. Now it was time to move on to the roof. For the substructure, I used some chipboard. It's great because it's really thin, but also very rigid. If you don't wanna buy a big pack of this stuff, it can be found at the back of most notepads. I intentionally made the roof without any overhang on the sides because I want to be able to place a bunch of these small buildings close together when setting up city streets. For the shingles, my preferred foam method was not an option as that absolutely does require a hot wire table. No worries though, I went back to one of my early techniques of using thin chipboard. This can be found for free on many food packages. Cereal boxes, frozen pizza boxes, granola bar boxes, whatever, you get the idea. The thinner, the better. I cut this stuff into half inch strips. You can go through the effort of cutting the shingle shapes into the strips, which will make applying them easier, but I find that to be a rather annoying process and actually kind of tiring on the hands after a while. And I prefer to just cut the strips into individual shingles of varying sizes. The nice thing about this is that the cardstock is thin enough that you can just stack a few strips together and cut all the shingles very quickly. To apply these, I used hot glue. This way I could keep moving and not worry about things shifting around. If I were doing strips, I'd be able to get away with tacky glue, but with individual shingles, hot glue is an absolute all-star. You'll notice I don't have layout lines for the rows and I shift my shingles up and down a bit to give some variation. Working this way does require a little effort to make sure overall your rows aren't going too wild, but it does look really, really good. So the roof is done and it took me about three hours to do, I think, give or take. So for those of you keeping score, the roof took pretty much double the time it took to do everything else. But that is the nature of doing little intricate work like this. But as you can see, one little piece of recycling out of my recycling bin, last night's pizza box is now a roof. It cost me nothing. All I used was a pair of scissors and hot glue to do it. Uh, we got a little bit of a problem right, right here, a little bit of a gap. And also I kind of don't like how plain this little wood box out looks. So I think I'm just gonna add a bit of wood strip embellishments to make it look better and hide that gap. Let's see, let's get this, uh, let's get this build complete so that I can move on to Mod Podging it. After calling all of my timber placement done, I really did not like how square all the pieces looked and I needed to do something to make them look more realistic and to look like they weren't projecting so much from the stucco. This is the other problem I had alluded to earlier with texturing the foam core to look like stucco. While that rolling pin flattening had helped, I still didn't like how proud these timbers were sitting. So I decided to try chamfering all the edges using an X-Acto. This was tedious work, but oh my God, it looked so good. It made the timbers look far more interesting and realistic, giving them a hand-hewn log look, and it also gave the illusion of them being thinner than they actually were. 
The difficult thing was adding wood grain to the fresh cuts. In some spots, I was able to use my wire brush, but in others, I could not. I didn't want to get lines on my stucco areas. Trying to find a solution, I found this little wire tool that worked perfectly. Again, this is not a fancy or expensive tool. It was one of about 20 tools that came together in a $5 sculpting set. And now I finally have a use for it. There were a couple of spots on the build where I had some unsightly gaps where the timbers didn't fully cover the corners. This was an easy fix using some joint compound. Really any filler that you can smooth with water and a brush would work just fine. So. Final thoughts? Well, I think this project was a huge success. In one day or about eight hours, I created this really great looking foam house, not counting paint, that honestly looks as good as the ones I've made with better tools and materials. In fact, what I did here with the carving of the edges of the timbers actually makes this house look a bit better than the ones I previously built on the channel. That's the great thing about building things with limitations. You discover lots of cool new techniques. The next day I came back and painted the thing and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So in case the message wasn't clear, you can make this sort of stuff with limited tools and supplies, but more advanced tools do help speed things up. If you want to pick up any tools, be it simple or advanced, you can do so in a way that really helps out me and this channel. If you use the Amazon links in my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca, you will get the items that I use and recommend at no extra cost to you and the channel will earn a small commission to help fund future videos like this one. If the videos I make have helped you, consider supporting the channel via Patreon. It's through that support that I'm able to do this and help so many people get into this hobby and do my part to make this hobby grow and flourish. If you join up at the fellowship level, you get access to our private Facebook group that's full of people, including myself, that will be happy to help you day to day on your terrain building journey. Well, that's it guys. Point proven? I, I hope so. My real goal here was to try to inspire some people that may feel limited by the tools and materials that they have to try something more adventurous and more advanced. You can do it and sometimes you might even end up with something that looks a little bit better than if you had the fancy tools because you're forced to be more creative. I hope you found this video entertaining, informative, and of course, most of all, inspiring. If you did, hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below. That's it for this week, guys. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you again next week. Cheers.